dialogue is a new way of um, communicating without judging, without giving advice. Um, just a way of opening up and sharing what really matters for us and going beyond misconception and anger and frustration by just taking the time to sit, breathe and listening to each other, basically. Um, dialogue is different from um, other kind of conversations because in dialogue you put your whole heart in it, you put your emotions, you actually speak about things that matter to you, about things that shape you as a person. And through dialogue I just um, feel like I am capable of finding my inner peace and that is what makes dialogue so special to me. Appreciative inquiry on which this format is based uh, was uh, developed in the field of organizational psychology. Um, they discovered that it's much more effective to accomplish change in an organization through the appreciative approach than uh, the, the common critical approach that we use. Uh, um, not only in science but in our lives in general. Our global human culture is based on the critical approach that you you look at the world you 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 um, take out what you uh, experience as wrong and you try to correct it um, the problem with that is that whatever gets our attention as humans tends to become more basically we create with our attention when you focus on what is already working, what is so much appreciated by the people, what gives life to the organization, this starts thing, things flowing in a way that solves all the problems. This is something that is of course not only true in the context of an organization, it is true in a wider context of human life. And uh, it is then also true in the context of conversation. That is the place where our minds meet and and create together, um, uh, form and inspire the new ideas through which our human endeavor continues ever expanding into the future. Conversation is like the core element on the, in which we can focus this appreciative inquiry. And that is what we have called dialogue. Appreciation is a key feature in the process of dialogue. I think uh, this is the angle through which uh, we can approach the other, get to understand better and deeper, and connect and discover ourselves through this connection with the others. You're in a group of six to eight people, and um, there are questions asked and everyone gets a turn to uh, share their thoughts about the question, to explore their own thoughts and feelings. It gives them a way to, um, to be heard fully by others and um, to share this beautiful bubble that they're in. The questions always are um, built up to um, enhance the appreciation in all the, uh, within the group of participants, focusing in the, on the subject at hand. So a dialogue typically has four steps in which um, the first question is sort of an um, introductory question which, which opens up the, the space. Often it goes along the lines of what does this concept or this word mean to you? So to bring it down to a personal level. The second question then is uh, around uh, inspiration. So um, often we ask participants to share a story from, from their regular lives. Um, the third question is around uh, dreams and uh, potentially also intentions for the future. So um, what, could, um, what could this concept look like in a, if you could dream it up? What could it look like if you were to decide or choose the ideal way this particular concept could look to you? Um, often this is a moment where uh, the dialogue is, is uh, potentially quite emotional and quite intense and the fourth round is sort of a closure round in which um, we move out of the space and into back to, to, to present or realities 
Um, so we ask what, the, what they can take away from the situation, from the dialogue, but also what next steps for um, implementing um, this, this uh, dreamt up uh, reality could potentially be. In my experience, dialogue in, in groups has such a massive impact because this energy starts to build up and with that there is so much empathy that comes up within you and that creates such a nice form of community and really brings the group together because everyone is sharing from their hearts and everyone is trying to understand and trying to listen rather than trying to to object and find something to say against it. And I think that is extremely powerful. It can be directed um, towards like deeper intentions of participants. So if, for instance, if you, if you have a group that is focused together in an intention, as they are a team in some context, uh, a dialogue can be directed towards this intention towards clarifying, elaborating um, um, and developing the, the intention of the group involved, be it a, a small group of people working together occasionally or an organization in a, in a more uh, sustainable context. Dialogue in the way that we practice it uh, started in Rotterdam in 2001 after 9-11. Um, city of Rotterdam was experiencing problems uh, between Islamic and non-Islamic groups in the city and they were fearing for riots and other forms of uh, expressions of unrest. So they came together and they started investigating the possibilities to do something about it and out of it came this uh, dialogue formula that we practice. And uh, yeah, from there it proved so successful that in the end, in the course of five, six years, it became a movement through the whole of Holland. You can focus dialogue on certain concepts, on certain academic subjects that you want to gain deeper understanding of, that you want to gain broader understanding of, like compassion, sustainability or equality. We look for what, for what is already working um, around the subject that we focus on. And then that takes us to um, new levels of creativity, of clarity, of uh, problem solving, um, uh, as compared to the so well-known discussion. We are offered new perspectives by the, by the participants but what really makes it work is that the perspectives are offered cooperatively instead of um, in, in, in the sense of struggle. I experience that as a very, very powerful approach to any subject I want to gain deeper understanding of. Since dialogue is a really um, a, a personal um, experience, I find that as a facilitator you have to be extremely aware of the the people in it, really giving each individual the attention, but looking at the sum of all individuals and really trying to notice what's required, where can I ask more, where should I take a step back. The priority I have um, whilst facilitating a dialogue is to really deeply try to understand what the people inside of my dialogue group are trying to accentuate to me and try to create a safe space where, where empathy is provided, where love is provided for them. When facilitating dialogue, to me, uh, the most important thing is to uh, create an environment where uh, people feel comfortable about speaking their hearts out and about um, figuring out within themselves who they really are and what they really want to achieve and to find the greatest purpose in life. To make a dialogue really work. Being present 100% is necessary because it helps sustain the moment of compassion and connection 
and uh, guarantees the trust of all the participants across the board have in dialogue. To be a facilitator, you have to uh, create the space for the individual that's right in front of you to feel safe and to feel free to talk about and to share uh, things they, they want to share with you. It's about setting the tone, it's about setting the mood. Um, as a facilitator of such a dialogue, I look always for the things to appreciate. I concentrate on everything that I hear that has my appreciation and I enhance that. I, I ask more questions about that. And in that way, I, I build an atmosphere in which this, uh, this appreciation just grows.